G'day guys, a build report for the Rawley Wow um, Eaglet, um, which is based on the Earthquaker Devices Talons. I haven't heard of that pedal before, just there's just so many pedals these days I can't keep up with them. Um, uh, so, but this is this is it, um, and it's very good. I'm going to break this video up into two because I have a lot to say. Um, and before speaking of having a lot to say, oh, uh, actually, sorry. Rawley Wow, if you haven't heard of him before, type in R-U-L-L-Y-W-O-W, -L -L -W, as in Rawley Wow, uh, into, um, into Google and you'll find his um, PCB store. So there's lots of PCB, I just wanted to talk about this before we go into the, um, into the build report, um, because uh, it's not something I've really mentioned in the past, something I wanted to say, um, if you don't mind, I'll try and keep it quick so we can get into the, into the build report. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, PCB makers these days, um, and there's a lot of retailers these days popping up everywhere. Um, it's it's good because it gives us lots of um, lots of options. There's lots lots of different uh, projects that you can that you can pick, and there's more competition between the retailers. That's all good for um, pedal builders. Um, but as far as my channel goes, the way that the way that I want to I want to I want to conduct it um, is if they contribute to the community then I'm happy to do these videos for the for the for the for the uh, PCB designers that contribute the community contribute to the community now I say this because uh, I'm bringing it up now because you've seen a ton of Rawley Wow um, effects and you see other ones that I've done in the past these are effects from people who have contributed to the to our scene they've 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 helped us out in the community. I don't mind doing that for them. These videos help them to to for, for sales for their for their PCBs. Uh, it's it's not it's not a question of whether it does. It does. Unless I come on here and say this is the worst thing I've ever I've ever built, they're gonna get sales out of this um, out of my out of these videos that I do. Um, so. I'm quite happy to do that for the ones that contribute back into the community. There are retailers out there, um, both with PCB sales, um, a P sorry, PCB makers, and um, uh, and pedal parts that do nothing for the community. It's purely a profit raising um, exercise. Those ones you won't hear me talk about. Um, uh, they, they just they. they if you're in, if you're in this to profit from the community purely without actually importing anything or providing anything to the community, then you can work your own way out about advertising and working out your own thing. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a two-way street as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's why some you won't hear me talk about some, some other people um, that that sell pedal pedal parts and pedal PCBs. Um, uh, but you will he hear me talk about others. Rawley Wells helped me immensely with my PCB layout skills. Um, and I sell PCBs and he sells PCBs, so there's no reason for him to do that. You know, It's in his interest not to teach me how to do PCB layouts. It was a number of years ago, he gave me kind of like a bit of a crash course and it filled in a ton of gaps for me and really lifted my game. So he didn't have to do that for me and that's that was a nice thing for him to do and I'm returning the favour. This is how I like to do, shall we say, business. Um, you help me, I help you. I don't like this sort of level of business where you can, where you just jump in, copy everybody's stuff and profit. That that does nothing for the for the greater picture. It does nothing for the for the greater the the, the for 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 society in any way. Um, that's not how I like to do business. So anyway, that's just a little background. That's why I do a lot of Rawley Wow videos. Not he doesn't just help me. He's helped a lot of people on the forums. Um, continuously importing and, and um, there's even a dip trace library that he created for people to use. You know, again, he makes PC PCBs. It's in his interest not to share that information, but he did to help others, to benefit, so other people can benefit from it. So that's a nice thing to do, and that's why I'm talking about his PCB. Uh, that's why I do a lot of demos and stuff on his PCBs. He's a good guy. 
So anyway, let's um, have a look at this. I just wanted to talk about that because um, it's not something that I've mentioned in the past, um, but I think it's actually important to mention it um, now, and you might hear me say it a few times in the future. Um, it would be, oh, my chair just cracked. It would be good if perhaps other retailers could, um, you know, like step up their game and actually and actually give something back to the community. But anyway, it's probably wishful thinking. So let's have a listen to it and let me talk about it. And yes, those eyes light up. So can you guys actually tell what this picture is? And I say that honestly because I'm not the best painter in the world. Um, and I think most people have guessed it that I've showed. It's supposed to be a spider. Um, and you know, I've, I'm not the best painter in the world, so I did the best job I could and hopefully it resembles what I'm trying to actually make it look, make what I'm trying to make it look like. It's actually a red back spider um, at the top there. Um, you can see there's a red back. A red back, a red back spider has kind of like, people always draw it as a triangle, but I think it's kind of like, almost like a, like a splash. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to explain. If you want to, if you want to look it up um, on Google, you'll see what that is. Um, this is a venomous spider that we have in Australia. Pretty much everything's venomous in Australia, including, you know, I don't know, worms probably. You could probably get bitten and killed by a worm. We've got tons of venomous stuff. In fact, I think we've got the top eight venomous spiders, uh, uh, sorry, snakes. Um, I think the top two snakes are in a different country though. But um, anyway, that's a, red, that's a redback spider. I've seen them in my garden, so that they are they are around. They're not... They're not a common spider, but they are around, um, and you have to tell kids when they're young not to pick up things like um, dry in dry areas, like uh, like old pots. Um, they they get in they get in dry areas with rocks and things like that, um, and yeah, they 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 are actually a bit of an interesting spider. They 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 drop um, they drop webs down. They catch ants and they pull them up. I saw David Attenborough. Um, uh, he, he did a little segment when he, uh, one of the insect ones that he did, and it had the redback spider in it, and um, he showed it showed footage of what they actually do. It's like it's like a trap. Um, these little these little webs that stick to the floor, and then when an in, when an ant comes up and, and touches it, it, goes and sort of gets slingshotted up to where the spider is. It's pretty interesting. Um, I'm actually full blown arachnophobic, so drawing a spider's face was kind of a bit of a challenge for me. And I can tell you, um, I looked up. Uh, a, a a reference picture and it was freaking me out. Some of the pictures that came up, I did a I did a Google search for spider face or something like that, and um, yeah, the the uh, I was horrified <laughs> by the pictures because I, I can't stand spiders, um, which is interesting living in this country because they're everywhere. But anyway, um, so that's what it is. It's a red back spider. Though, as I said, those um, those eyes light up. You'll see that they light up red because um, it looks cool as, and you'll see that in the um, sound demo. Um, so, on the front we've got volume and gain, presence in the middle, bass, mid, treble um, across the across the front here, across the bottom the bottom line. This is the same layout I think as what the original uh, Earthquake Devices um, pedal actually had. It had six like this in that exact order, I believe. I th I also believe that the bass, mid, and treble are actually active because they're attached to an op amp, the second op amp. There's two op amps. Um, the second op amp has the tone controls attached to it, and I don't think I've ever seen a a pedal use that sort of um, setup with um, three controls on the one op amp for sort of. Uh, it must be active because it says in the. Uh, I looked up the the um, uh, earthquake devices uh, description of the pedal, and it says twelve o'clock is uh, twelve o'clock is nothing if you go. Uh, if you go down, it's a cut. If you go up, it's a boost. So if you hear about boosting with tone controls, it means it's taking it's taking treble and and increasing the amount. Um, so it's it's adding treble, treble that wasn't there. Often with with pedals and often with distortions and things like that, they are just purely cut. They are all boot. Maybe they're uh, well, they're all kind of boosted to start off with, aren't they? And then they cut. Um, from there, so I don't know. Getting into a, sort of the technical area, I'm not totally 100% sure. I probably should have did a bit of research before I started doing this video, but roughly that's what it is. So anyway, that's that's what they said. If it's all at if it's all at 12 o'clock, it's flat, boost, cut. So when you see me do the actual sound demo, you'll know what's going on. And the presence up there is adding top end. It says 
um, so it's probably a very high frequency compared to treble um, if they're saying top end usually that means like it's 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 the top of the treble epoxy job on the top there as I've been doing lately as you know it's an extra step it's an extra cost it takes an extra half an hour you got to wait another day for it to, to dry but geez look at that it's just awesome I can't get over that it's the best it's the best gloss job um, I've found so far next to powder coating sorry powder, powder coating coming in a second um, yeah it looks really cool um, these knobs are on my store as I always talk about they're high quality knobs not rubbish ones um, so if you're after something that looks high quality you know where to go um, these let's just get to probably straight in the back of it now because that's pretty much it for the front so uh, just the, the paint too, I'll just um, mention it's model paint, um, it's uh, Vallejo model paint which I was using to do some miniature painting um, and I'm using for this because it's just such, it's got really strong pigment in it, it's, it's really good to work with um, and um, it, uh, yeah, it, looks really, it looks really cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I did that with a dry brush, I can't remember, could have been like, dry brush is just an old brush that's all sort of, you just sort of smash up the end, put some paint on it smash up the end, get rid of 90% of the of the paint and then just like like flick it on. You don't normally do that with dry brushing. Dry brushing, that's a different technique, but um, it was a dry brush that I used to um, to do those hairs. Anyway, um, so looking at the back, there's your one op amp. So that's a dual op amp, obviously. Which one is it? It is a TL072, which is um, very common. Um, and um, I socketed that even though it doesn't really need it, but I always socket just in case I make an error. Um, and this is all just the stuff from my web store that I sell. MLCC um, uh, audio or, audio grade um, uh, ceramics and you know quarter watt resistors. It's really actually very straightforward. There's nothing complicated to uh, no complicated parts to find. It's it's all there. Bit of a squeeze to get it in because it does take up a lot of room. This. As you can see, the, this pot would be, well, as you might be able to see if I move in the right spot, this pot would be here. So the bottom of the pot is there. So this this section down the bottom, um, like it would be better if it was up a little bit like that. Like if you could actually shift the PCB up, the pots stay where they are, but the PCB goes up. But because it's Ben, I'd imagine there was no way of doing that because he's a, he's, a, he's a bit of a master with some. Well, actually, you got this you got this wiring harness down down the bottom here anyway, so that's not going to work. Does that look familiar, that wiring harness? You may have seen that before. It's the same one that I use on my PCBs because I'm using his library and he's actually showed me how to, as I was saying at the start of the video, he actually showed me how to, um, um, how to use that on the schematic level and it comes over onto the PCB, um, PCB layout. Um, uh, and you can put it wherever you want, but I, I put it in the middle just like he does because it's just easier to get to the, get to the three pole double throw. So... Um, yeah, that's 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 his work, um, and that's really it on the inside. There's uh, there's no complicated parts. Uh, are the LEDs? The two LEDs up there, they go down to the spider's eyes. So I've just I've just soldered wires onto those, sent them down to the front where they are. I saw those two LEDs and I thought I don't think I can pass up the opportunity of not actually having those on the front. Um, and leaving out a status LED, as you can see, those pins on the um, on the on the on the three pole double throw are actually um, not populated. Um, so they they go through to the front there with wires from the um, from those two holes. You can do that. You can do that with any pedal. Um, it doesn't matter how many LEDs it's got. You can put it on the front. Kind of works as a status LED. If you don't have a signal going in. It won't, they won't light up, of course, but you know, if you're using a pedal in dry, in in clean, you click it, and you're not playing anything, you you know it's in, well, you probably know it, you're probably going to know it's in distortion, and then you start playing, the, the the eyes light up, you know, it's enough to know the pedal is on, um, when when the eyes light up, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I think that's all I want to talk about with this one. Um, yeah, it's it worked out really well. Um, there's not too much that I don't like about it, except for that thing that you may have just seen there. There's a bit of a drip, but that happens with epoxy. Just went a little bit too heavy-handed, but, you know, just minor stuff like that. But overall, it looks really good. Um, and people see it in my study all the time. They say, oh, man, what's that? You know, they want to know what it is. So when I get people asking, you know, what pedal, what, what does that do? I know that I must have done something right. Well, with the look of it anyway. 
So it sounds as good as it looks, really. I, I like the sound of it too. It's kind of a crunchy distortion. Um, so let's uh, go to the sound demo, well, in the next video. Um, this one's probably gone on long enough. Thanks for watching this one and get ready to hear the next one, which, I'll, which will be my next upload, as I always do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Cheers.